right, everybody, we're going to put you in Ken's shoes because it's time to play Couch Cannon. That's where we test your metal by only showing you the loose cannons cards. It'll be up to you to make the right read and try to beat the pros. Bring it on. And while you're at it, bring it on again, too. Bring it on again, -er. Tony G straddled. Barbaro's out. Hashem. Folds. So far, so good. And Ken with Ace Queen. I'm noticing a pattern with these Couch Cannon hands. Raise. <laughs> He's on the button. Raise he does to 2,000. Daniel's out. Tilly folds. A couch cannon walk. <laughs> no, Tony's in. Just to see if I can get it all in as well. And you have quads. Tony's range is super wide, not too worried. I'll make it a big part though. Joe, I thought he was the protector of the cannons. Queen, Jack, 10, top pair for the cannon. Tony's first to act. Ooh. Bet's 5,000. This is a super easy call. Top pair, gut shot, backdoor diamonds. Tony fires constantly with all kinds of nonsense. Call. Call, 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 call. I know you're scared, Ken. Call. <laughs> Trust me. And Ken calls. Atta boy, Ken. To the turn. Deuce of hearts. All right, backdoor diamonds are out, so there goes one piece of the pie. Tony G fires 10K. But yes, Ken has to call again. We had too many reasons to call on the flop. Still plenty left now. He does. Wow. I like your hand. Do you want to swap hands? <laughs> I'm not scared till Tony bombs it. River, 10 of spades. There's your bomb, 35K. If there's one thing I've learned on the big game, it's that Daniel loves the call. But if I've learned two things, the second would be that Tony only bombs when he has it. I hope you don't have quads. <laughs> I guess you don't. <laughs> There's no straight flash out there. Now he's talking on top of it. Ken needs to fold like the wind, like the overnight crew at the Banana Republic. There goes all the profit. He should fold harder than someone who makes paper mache at a poster board. All right. Now, seriously, I know that this is a big decision for Ken and that he's getting two to one, but I've honestly never been so sure about one of these couch cannon hands. Ken's playing with his own money now. Any call he makes comes out of his profit. I'm trying to save Ken money here because I honestly cannot remember a time when Tony G bombed the river and he didn't have a monster. You have a good chance of winning the hand if you call. He was begging at that point. <laughs> that was begging. I wasn't sure. And then he begged at the river. So Ken folds. Let's see if he made the right decision. Tony G with Queen 10 full boat. You made a good lay down there, Ken. I had a full house. He sure did, Ken. You made the right decision. Sleep easy. Yeah, you begged at the river. When he was about to fold, Tony was like, ah, wait, wait, wait. Did you flop it straight? A bit too much. No, he had ice queen. Hashem calls it. You were beat all the way. Oh, you were beat all the way. Oh. What did you have, Tony? I had a full house. Well, now it is time for the Couch Cannon segment. This is where we reveal only the cards of the loose cannon. You at home, try to play along. This is the segment that's going to win us the Emmy, Chris. I can feel it. Tony's the big blind, so we're under the gun. So that means our range should be pretty tight. Pocket kings. I'd say that falls into our range. We're going to want to make a standard raise. <laughs> I hope to be involved again. No, nope, just a limp. Elizabeth did this once before with aces, and it worked out, but I'm nervous about it still. Uh, action has folded around to Viffer in the small blind. Folds. Can't check it back and win it all. In one I raise it. Don't worry. It's, it's like a prison. It's not even. So Tony's raised to 1400 Tony's opened the door. We should get some more money in. Call. It's not even anything. Come on, Elizabeth. Punish him. I can guarantee you have the best plenty. hand. It's not even Vanessa make... Russo punished me something sweet. That was the <laughs> sweetest punish, punishment anyone ever received. Tony bets 2000 We're okay with this board so far. We want to start getting value now. Don't, don't, don't get into trouble here. This is dangerous territory. A raise and a call. I don't want you. I've qualified. I can promise you. Jack of clubs on the turn. I can promise you. Tony bets 10000 I like the flop raise, and while I hate this card that just came out, I don't think we can ever fold two kings to Tony G on this board. He could too easily be doing this with just a pair or even worse. So I think we should try to get to showdown as cheaply as possible now. I'd lay away with a coupon, whatever we have to do. At the very least, we should see how much we hate the next card. It's a sick lay down. But I know I got it. Did you catch a flash? I'm, I'm qualified. <laughs> Are you going to show me? i show you one card. I can't show both. That would be unfair. A few hands ago, Daniel turned a flush on Elizabeth. 
I just don't see how you can give Tony G this much credit. Oh, okay. She does. I gotta mix it up, don't I? Let's see what to- Oh, that's brutal. The worst starting hand in poker. One card. I'm gonna hate you when I hear yeah. <laughs> it. I think you he bastard. just- bastard. Uh... You bastard. <laughs> Why? I had kings. That would that would have been the same situation. Yeah, what was the other one? If you, see, if you call the ten, I mean, you lose you lose the whole stack. Probably had like. Now you're getting people to fold kings, huh? Ten deuce. No, no, I didn't have that. I had. You had. You had what? I had I had a deuce in my hand. The lady just told you she folded. I didn't kings. have no, no, I didn't have three deuces. Had a, you had a deuce. I had, ace, I had the ace of clubs. Deuce with the ace of clubs. It is the couch cannon hand. We get to see only the loose cannon's cards and play along with him. That's right. We're going to put ourselves in the loose cannon seat. His action will be our action. And for you kids at home, it's pretty easy when you can see all the cards. But let's see how you do when you don't have all the information. I'm not a tightest player here. That's for sure. I thought you were by far the loosest coming in. Well, I feel it's crazy now. Now I have to raise another gun just to show you I'm not in it. It's a 13-0. <laughs> Elky raises to 1300. Elky's raise doesn't mean a ton since he's a very active player and he's attacking the loose cannon's big blind. Everybody else folds around to the cannon in the big blind. Regardless, the bus should fold this, especially out of position. Nope, he calls. I guess that wouldn't make for a very good couch cannon hand. <laughs> Four six king, two spades, bottom pair for the cannon. Checks. Check is the move here. Elky fires 1,800. Well, he called when he shouldn't have pre-flop, and now he's hit a pair, so he best not be folding now. Bobby the bus calls. The turn. Trip fours for the cannon. Yahtzee. He slow plays it and checks. Perfect. He wants to keep that same passive line. Elky doing the work for him, betting 4,400. Now, the LC may be tempted to just call here to keep looking weak. You can do that, but then you have to check the river and hope he bets again, or you can raise here and maybe get in a raise here and a bet on the river. Bobby raises to 12-3. That was a check raise, so it should look pretty dang strong. Now, if I'm sitting where the cannon is and Elky's making funny faces like this, I'm just assuming he's irritated that he has to fold. So, anytime you want to fold now, Elky. Go ahead. Go ahead and fold it. Well, he's reaching for chips. Re-raises to 26-6. Oh, boy. Now this is a min three bet. There's absolutely no chance Elky is value three betting with a hand worse than the cannons. So Elky's either bluffing or he's got us in jail like Papillon. The problem with calling is that I don't want to face another huge bet on the river, but I think the cannon's hand is too strong to fold. Yeah, big honky. Huh, really? Huh? Can you believe it? Huh? Can you believe it? I can't believe it. A big, big hand, huh? Big bet. I got a big piece of that. Bobby does have a big piece of that board, but he's smart to realize that it can be beat. Still, I think trip fours is just too strong to get away from. The cannon calls. He's right to be suspicious of Elky. I'm a little suspicious myself. River, the deuce of hearts. Ferdinand checks. Bobby's check has opened the door for Elky to make a big bet here, but maybe if he was bluffing before, he'll put the brakes on now. Looks like we're not going to get so lucky. It is full steam ahead for Elky. He bets 44-5. Now the cannon here has decided to play a crappy hand from a crappy position, and now he's in a crappy spot. Hey, you want to see me go early, huh? Huh? Not ready, actually. Huh? Not really. Not really. Then why do you bet so much? Big pot. Okay, what I do know is that of all the crappiness I just mentioned, Elky probably doesn't think the cannon has a hand as strong as it is. Put 
to dent me. <laughs> Bobby's way more relaxed than I am, considering this bet is for more than half a stack. I feel like I'm gonna make this call. You're gonna turn over three kings full. Even though I really hate this spot and the poker police is gonna pull the bus over for going 54 out of position, I think for Bobby, it's as simple as I have trips. Trips is pretty dang strong. I call. Bobby calls. I gotta call. And, oh, he was bluffing. Busted straight draw. I bet the bus is so happy Elky was bluffing there. He could give him a big fat freedom kiss. Big call by the amateur who picks up his biggest pot of the week of nearly 150 grand. That was a bad try, buddy. Uh, I thought he was going to show me three kings, I swear to God. <laughs> you knew we had a four? Huh? Did you know we had a four? <laughs> then I was thinking that, too, that is he going to put me on a four? Yeah. I knew he had a four. He could have had pocket aces, too. I mean, that's another hand I thought he could have had. Hey, Joe. Yes. It's time yet again for our favorite segment of the big game, Couch Cannon. This is where you at home get to experience what Bill Given is going through. We'll see his cards and his cards only. I am ready, willing, and able. Action is folded around to Joe Hashem, who's out. Daniel raises on the button. Daniel could have any two cards raising the cannon's big blind in position. Galfond calls. Nine queen for the cannon. Calls. All right, well, I guess he's in the blind, but this is a hand that has pretty bad reverse implied odds. The flop, Trey Trey four. Galfond checks. Okay, now given should be check folding. There's the check. Negranu. That's 2,500. Galfond calls. All right, he's gone through the motion of waiting for his turn to act, but he should definitely fold now. Nope, calls. Ooh, splash the pot. Come on, Bill, punish these like two. Yeah. Punish them, Bill. If anyone needs punishment to this table, these guys are punish out of line. Eight of clubs on the turn. Galfond checks. All right, so the cannon has decided to overcall float out of position with queen high against a calling station and a guy who bought in for half a million. Givens checked over to Daniel. Daniel. That's 7,200. Right now I'm putting the very bottom of Negrano's range on at least a four, which has given destroyed. Galfond folds. If the cannon was floating, he definitely cannot just call again. He should fold. You got a three over there? But if he wanted to get nuts, and if he actually did have a three in his hand, this is a spot where he would check raise for value. Check raise would look super strong in this spot, and Daniel, unless he actually had a three, or maybe a big spade draw, would probably fold. 17.5 more. There's the check raise. Wow. It takes nerves of steel for Bill to fire at a pro for this amount with absolutely nothing. So I guess you do have a three, huh? Especially one that likes to call as often as Daniel. That was a pretty decent bomb by the cannon, and Daniel's usually pretty honest in these situations. If he's asking if he's got a three, my guess is that he's worried that the cannon does have one. Hmm. 17.5. Yes, that much more to call. Usually when Daniel thinks about it this long, he's talking himself into a call. I wonder if Bill knows that. And there's that call. Gulp. Good luck. You too. <laughs> Six of spades on the river. That card would complete a flush draw, and my read was that Daniel would only call a raise on the turn with a three or a flush draw. If he has either one, I don't think there's any way to make him fold. Remember, a loose cannon cannot reload. If Given continues the bluffing, it gets picked off. He will be decimated. If you bet too much, I'm not going to call, so don't go crazy. Just warning you. Or, you know, helping you, I don't know. <laughs> Twenty's good. We'll go to twenty-eight. 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 Yeah. There's the final barrel. Oh, this is an interesting hand. Will it work? They didn't scare you, huh? Or maybe it helped you. I 
can beat that, 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 that. I can beat a lot, but wait a minute, you called a raise. I have ace three. Ace, ace three. Pocket fours, ace three. You wouldn't do that with a flush draw, right? Oh, you would you do that with like queens or something? Oh boy, I don't see how I can throw this away. I have no idea. I know you probably. Twenty-eight is the bet. Okay. Twenty-eight is the bet. Okay, I'm gonna. You're gonna need a really good hand to win, but I think you might just have one. My kicker. My kicker beats some hands. If you have a really good hand, you'll win. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. For sure. Well, it's it's got to be a really good hand, but yeah, if, you, ha really good, if right? you have it, you'll win. Yeah, all right. I mean, I'm probably going to give you your money anyway, because I can't fold this. 28, right? Yep. Merry Christmas. Daniel calls. Sickening. It's actually a stone cold blow. Oh. oh, wow. I got the three. Daniel wins a pot of more than 117 grand. I thought, yeah, yeah. That was, well, he was polarized there, down. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right now, it's time for my favorite segment of the night, the Couch Cannon Hand. This is where we all get to experience what it's like under the gun and in the hot seat from the eyes of our loose cannon. And the action this time will start on the cannon, Carrie Burchell. Should be really fun considering so far, Carrie's been an absolute baller. And a shot caller. King That's 10 of diamonds. Right. Suited That's Broadway right. cars should be a raise. Okie dokie. She just limps. All right, I take no responsibility for what happens after this. I wash my hands at this one. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Duhamel raises to 1,600. Mercier taking his time, makes the call. All right, well, if Jason's in, I'm back in. Guy makes the call. This is Carey's fault for not raising, and I don't care what Phil Helmuth said last week, King-10 is not a trapper hand. And apparently not enough money in the pot for whatever trash Bob had. Kachilov folds. Back on the cannon. Carey's limp has backed herself into a corner. She has to call, but now she's up against three opponents. No three bet, so maybe nothing too scary out there. Four-way action to the flop. Jack, four, deuce, a couple of diamonds, and Carey has a big flush draw. Checks it. She's done the right thing by checking to the original raiser. If she had let it this flop, she could easily be raised, and all she's got at the moment is king high. Duhamel reaching for c-bet chips. Duhamel continues, and Jason quickly out. Duhamel's original raise may have just been an isolation attempt to get the pot heads up with Carey, so this could just be a C-bet with anything. Now it's up to Guy. Seems like he's at least contemplating a call. Or maybe putting a flaming dragon in his next Cirque show. <laughs> and he lets it go. Action back on our cannon. This is a pretty obvious call. However, a little poker tidbit, if you always just call with a draw in this spot and always raise with strong hands, it's easier for your opponents to get a read on you when you do one or the other. Well, she just calls this time, so we'll see a turn card. Ten of spades, Carrie now with a pair to go with her flush draw. Great turn card, Carrie could now easily have the best hand. Checks it. Fine with her checking back to the last aggressor. Duhamel fires again, 11,600. All right, so I don't like this bet. Duhamel pursed his lips, which is sometimes indicative of a bluff, but I'd say I'm 50-50 on my live reads at best. <laughs> I don't think Carrie should fold, but I'd be cautious about calling another bet on the river if she doesn't improve. Well, Duhamel's certainly very interested in what Carrie's about to do here. And it looks like she's at least calling. She does, makes the call. Carrie's got a decent amount of showdown value with second pair, and of course, she still has that diamond draw. River, queen of spades. Carrie's not loving that card. That is not a good card. A lot of stuff is beating Carrie now. She checks it. Any queen, any jack, ace king, eight nine. Really hope this bet isn't for too much. How about 27,500? That's a bomb. I could totally see Jonathan playing ace king the whole way this way. I think this is a fold. Maybe Carrie's getting outplayed, but whatevs. There are better spots. To call this bet would be over 35% of Carrie's remaining stack.
Call. But she calls. You call. You got it. Do Hommel? 8 7. Missed his straight. Tried a three barrel bluff, and Kerry picks it off. Ooh. What an amazing call. I think that sends a message a little bit, right? And that message is that Kerry is a baller and a bluff caller. Whoops. Whoops. Oh.